one, let's talk a bit more about the ambiguity of belonging. And I'd like to focus today on the characters of Tao and Sue from Gran Torino. Now, in a sense, um, the ambiguity of their belonging is fairly obvious. It's to do with the fact that they are teenagers of Hmong origin living in the United States, um, the children of immigrants. So let me maybe just to begin, take a look at a couple of words and phrases which have to do with immigration. Most of these you'll be aware of, um, but it won't do any harm to refresh them. And you can bear these in mind when you're thinking about Tao and Su. So let's start off with the, uh, the word ethnicity. Tao and Su are of Hmong ethnicity uh, and related to that ethnic minority. So the Hmong are, of course, an ethnic minority in the United States, so perhaps not in the neighborhood where so many of them are living in the film. Um, they are immigrants, uh, but to be more specific, we can talk about first generation or second generation immigrants. So first generation immigrants would be the people who actually left their home country to go to the new country. And the second generation immigrants would be the people who were born to them in the new country. So Tao and Su would be second generation immigrants because they were born in the United States, whereas their parents, grandparents who moved to the United States would be first generation immigrants. You can also talk about third generation uh, immigrants and so on. Third generation would be the children of the second generation immigrants. Um, then a couple of related terms, integration and assimilation. So obviously both these terms refer to individuals or groups becoming part of a new culture. But what's the difference between them? Well, I think that while integration means becoming a part of a new culture, while retaining some of the characteristics at least of the old culture, whether that's linguistic, cultural, religious um, or whatever, uh, assimilation, on the other hand, um, would be becoming a part of the new culture while giving up most of these characteristics of the old culture. So in a sense, it's something stronger than integration is. Another term closely linked to assimilation in particular is acculturation, spelled A-C-C-U-L-T-U-R-A-T-I-O-N. Acculturation uh, is very similar to assimilation, but you use it more specifically. It's assimilation really in the context of culture, but um, very often you can use the two terms interchangeably. Then in this context of integration and assimilation, we have these two well-known metaphors that of course you'll have heard of, the salad bowl and the melting pot. Now for me, the salad bowl is a metaphor that has more to do with integration because in the salad bowl uh, you're becoming part of something new but retaining your old identity in large part whereas the melting pot is a more assimilationist metaphor so the characteristics of the old culture are being melted down and disappearing as part of this new soup that's being created if you like um, another term that's important in the context of Tao and Su would be hybridity, and the adjective uh, is hybrid. So if you're hybrid, then you have characteristics of two or more cultures. So in the case of Tao and Su, uh, that would of course be Hmong and American. And um, if you want to problematize this hybridity, then uh, you could say that a hybrid character is caught between cultures. Okay, so let's bear those terms in mind and start looking at our characters. We'll start off with Sue, and uh, it should be clear to anyone who's seen the film that Sue is a hybrid character, but at least at the beginning of the film, I would see that in positive terms, because while she has American characteristics and Mong characteristics, she seems to fit in well in both contexts. So how does she fit in well in an American context? Well, she speaks the American language very well. Uh, her character is in some ways almost stereotypically American. She's very open. She's very sassy. She's very talkative. She has a, a white boyfriend. 
So she, clearly she fits in there. But also she fits in, well, in Hmong culture. She gets on very well with uh, her family. And while there are some conflicts with the, the gang members, um, generally speaking, she seems to fit in very well in that cultural context as well. And interestingly enough, she we often see her translating between English and Hmong, which is really quite uh, symbolic of the fact that she she's hybrid, but she fits in well in both cultural contexts. Now, of course, during the course of the film, that changes a bit. She does become subjected to, to physical sexual violence uh, by the members of the gang towards the end. But at least for the first half of the film, I would say she's a positive example of cultural hybridity. Things are a bit different for, for Tao. Uh, he's also hybrid, but more in the sense of being caught between cultures. He, at least at the beginning of the film, doesn't seem to fit in very well in either context. So why not? Well, if we take Walt to be uh, the exemplar of American masculinity, then it's fairly obvious that Walt, that um, Tao, sorry, doesn't fit into that uh, at all. Um, he's not self-reliant. He's not self-confident. He doesn't have a job. He can't look after himself. Um, Walt would see him as a very weak character. So while he was born in America and of course speaks English perfectly, uh, in many ways he doesn't fit in with this stereotypical Americanness that is personified by Walt. But we have the same problem on the Hmong side. He doesn't really fit in that either um, because he doesn't conform to the expectations of masculinity there either. He's accused of doing women's work. He doesn't have the courage to ask out a girlfriend and things like that. So his belonging is ambiguous in the sense that he doesn't really belong to either of these two cultural spheres. And of course, part of his journey uh, throughout the film is a journey of belonging. So Walt mans him up, uh, he gets him a job, he gets him to ask out his girlfriend, and of course he uh, leaves the Gran Torino to him, which is a symbol of his becoming a young American man. At the same time, we get the sense that he maybe is going to fit in more and more into Hmong society as well. He asks out his Hmong girlfriend and by the end of the film of course he's been doing uh, man's work as well and so he's conforming more to the expectations of Hmong society. So the Hmong that we see at the the Tao sorry that we see at the end of the film is very difficult very different from the character that we see at the beginning of the film whereas there he didn't belong properly either to American or to Hmong culture by the end of the film, on the contrary, we get the sense that maybe here is someone who's on the way to belonging as a young American man, but also as a young Hmong man. Someone that we could refer to as a Hmong American comfortable with that identity. Okay, that's all for me today. Take care of yourselves. Stay healthy. I hope to see you soon.